So Gail, thanks for doing this My today. My pleasure. A lot of the students who watch these are looking for people that might be inspirations to them for, for careers. You and I went to high school together. I was saying to you, I never thought that we would be in the same industry because you were this talented artist and I was a person who studied. I'm so excited that we're actually doing things in the same industry and I want you to I want you to tell people who you are and what you do first and then and then I want to go through kind of how you got there. I am creative director at Visual Arts Press at the School of Visual Arts here in the city uh, where I went to college and I am incoming chair of undergrad design and advertising for the college. I'll be following in the footsteps of the chair who I learned from who's been at SVA for 50 years. Oh my God. So tonight's uh, a big event for him at Pentagram and uh, <laughs> yeah and so I'm following 50 years of this beloved figure. So it, there's something else that I've been doing for the last six years that I'll be doing for the next six years as well. I serve on the Citizen Stamp Advisory Committee for the Postal Service. So I'm part of a group of um, 13 or 14 experts on various topics, part of this committee that works with the post office and ultimately the postmaster general to help select the stamps that you not lick and stick, but now just stick, on <laughs> your, your envelopes. I <laughs> was fortunate to have been asked to uh, work on a stamp seven years ago, and it was the 150th anniversary of uh, the Emancipation Proclamation right. signing, and there was an opening on the committee, and I was asked to serve. Think you know, it's like the smallest thing I've ever done, and then the biggest thing I've ever done. Well, it's so, so great, though, because when you get to meet all these other people and collaborate with them, and yeah. they have from all these different backgrounds, uh -huh. you grow. Yeah, so absolutely. what a great way to grow yeah. and, and be able to bring your expertise to the table. I think that's amazing, yeah. and it sounds like fun. All right, I want to take a step back because I know that you were a designer when we were in high school. How did you sort of navigate your moves to get to where you are? I, I knew that I liked laying things out. I liked to draw, but I knew that it was sort of putting the pieces together and creating I mean, now I'm saying creating content, which you're not thinking about when you're a little kid, but there was something really fun about that. And I don't know if you remember uh, Spec and 16 magazines from when we were kids. I wasn't a Tiger Beat person. Mm -hmm. I was more Spec and 16. And, uh, and so, you know, it was the Jackson 5 and the Osmond brothers and all that, the Partridge family. And I would make these little magazines. And it was like, how do you get to do that for a living? I was certainly encouraged by Chris Francis at Spelman, um, and she had me take a, a Saturday class at Pratt, Manhattan, I remember, in a drawing class. Miss Francis was the person who encouraged me, and she'd taken continuing ed classes at, at SVA and said, oh, you should check that out. That's where you should go to college. And there was a poster in the art room, Paul Davis, to be good is not enough when you dream of being great, uh, an SVA poster. And I was mm -hmm. like, I think, yeah, I think that's where I want to go. So uh, based on a poster, <laughs> and Miss Francis' encouragement, working on the, the yearbook and the newspaper and the magazine and anything else that was sort of design related in, in school. So once you went to SVA, you, you were on a path. I was really fortunate that from, you know, Jackson 5 days straight through, I think I know what I want to do. And when I was at Rolling Stone, when I started in 87, uh, the magazine was then at 745 Fifth Avenue, which was the address of Spec and 16 magazines <laughs> that I remembered, 745 Fifth Avenue, and I was working in that building. And it's just like, I've come full circle. How did you get a job at Rolling Stone from, uh, from I from, mean, was it easy or? Well, from, after I graduated, uh, my portfolio teacher, Paula Cher, put me in touch with an art director at Random House who mm -hmm. was looking for an assistant designer. And so through Paula, I worked for Judy Lozer at, uh, at Vintage Books. And then again, through Paula and her partner at the time, Terry Coppell, I ended up at the Boston Globe for a couple of years uh, working on the Sunday Magazine. And there was uh, an art director in Texas doing great stuff at Texas Monthly. My editor, Andy Zellman, worked with. and. So I would look at Texas Monthly, and I was like, wow, this is such a good-looking magazine. And then that art director, Fred Woodward, 
moved to Regardie's in Washington, so I started subscribing to that a year later, I think, I see my George Harrison cover of Rolling Stone. I was like, the magazine looks different. And it was like, it's that guy, uh -huh. Fred, again. And so I decided in, in my youth there of not knowing better, I was like, I'm going to call him and try to meet him. And he was new enough at the time that he actually picked up the phone in the <laughs> evening. And he was like, hello. And I explained I worked with Andy. And so I would love to get some feedback on my work. You know, I'm living up here in Boston. I'm from New York. Uh, and he said, you know, actually, I'm, I'm actually looking for someone right now. And since I was doing a, a weekly Sunday magazine, I had just this much work and had right. slides made, you know, at great expense, and sent the package down. And, and he called and said, why don't you come down after work? And I flew down and met with Fred. And, and after much hand-wringing, assuming that I was getting this job, of course, I didn't get the job. But I had, like, <laughs> planned, like, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to? And I finally, he's like, you know what? I, I've got to hire somebody with more experience right now since I'm new to the city and new to the magazine. And I was so embarrassed because I totally overthought it. And it was like, You were already no there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> and finding an apartment and, uh, and worrying about all that I was leaving behind. <laughs> I wasn't leaving anything because I was staying. And I was like, OK, I am happy. I'm good. Thank you so much. Uh, hope to talk to you again. And, uh, and I thought, if he ever calls me back, like I enjoyed meeting him so much, and I loved what he was starting to do. It's like, I would do it. And a couple months later, he called back and was like, so things have changed, and do you want to come down? So I moved back home, uh -huh. back to the Bronx, because uh, I was taking a smaller salary to do this, because I just thought, I really want to work with him. Mm -hmm. And my folks were, you know, this was this great, job at the Globe that I was job for life and union and like how could you leave right and this is so stable and you know that that just and you're taking less money and you're taking less money and you're coming back with us so that didn't compute so they were sort of like yeah she got fired I was like no no I, <laughs> I, I, I think this is a good opportunity and so 14 years later had I not done that I mean I would have been fine but I would have been kicking myself right. because it was this golden moment at the magazine that I got to be part of. If I had said no because of this little bit amount of money, um, oh, I would have been kicking myself. That's kept me trying to remain scared and challenged all these years mm -hmm. to say yes to things that are like, <laughs> like this new position that I'll be taking on right. in August that it's like, this is a lot of kids. What am I going to do? Um, How many kids is it? Well, it's. 800 and something. It's, a, it's like a lot of students. It's a lot. Yes, the and advertising, BFA advertising, BFA design has got to be close to 900 students. But to go from a person who's making all this great stuff to a person who's teaching other people how to make, what was that transition like? How, how did you decide that? Or did someone just ask you to teach? Or how I, did that happen? I wanted to. It was such a good experience because I learned my art directing skills there. I learned to speak in front of other people, mm -hmm. uh, to defend my ideas, to, to be able to express ideas, and to be able to critique people's work. For, for them, I hope it was a good experience. For me, it was, and still is, um, an, a really important part of what I do. I love that you just said that, because if they don't have a network and they live somewhere that's not New York or San Francisco right. or LA or whatever, they, have, they really don't know, other than their professors, mm -hmm. how to sort of get started in the industry. I'm curious, you know, what path can they take to, to get started? I, I was with a coworker at uh, Kutztown University in, in Pennsylvania. That university has a really strong AIGA group. And so many colleges and so many cities have uh, really active chapters of the different organizations. And the student chapter in Kutztown they meet at 7 in the morning before class, which mm. starts at 8, which is crazy. And they meet twice a week. And this, this little dedica dedicated group of students who then, they get people to come down to speak. They're like, well, we'll pay you. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, but good for you that you've, like, you've set aside money to offer to pay people and put them up. And it's possible if you're somewhere else other than either coast to do what we do. Um, you don't have to be in, in 
Manhattan anymore. Uh, there are some students from Rutgers. Uh, I was uh -huh. in Camden a while back. And I was like, these design students are good. And like, let me, let me like keep in touch. And when I say keep in touch, like I really mean, like I'm saying it to you, seriously, keep in touch. Say, just put in the subject line that we met wherever and I, I will try to respond. So what piece of advice would you give to people, undergrads, who are thinking about how am I going to break into advertising? What served me well is that I can write. You have to know how to craft an email, if nothing else. Like those skills that, thank God, we learned early on um, will serve you so well forever and it's such a constant struggle. Um, I'm so surprised uh, that, that some people find it so difficult to, to do the most basic writing. Um, and I, I, by that I mean to send a, 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 a clear email. Well, the reason I think it's so interesting you just said that is because you are a, you're a designer. So what people watching this might think is that woman, that Gail is, she is visually uh, stimulated. Right. She, her her skill set is to communicate visually. So to hear you say writing is just as oh important. Goodness, yes, because you're you're. I mean, it sounds like such a cliche, but we're storytellers, right. and I have to be able to communicate both ways. And I I have to be able to to speak the language of the client, or uh, I can't expect others to like speak with in sort of designy language. And I think in the last. 20 years, we've all had to kind of adjust to uh, to learning other people's languages. To, yeah, to not come off as these sort of flighty artists right. or something. And and so for students, you have to know pop culture. You you have to know politics. You have to be aware of what's going on around you and not just you know what you're sort of scrolling through on right. screen and. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't stress that enough. I'm really thrilled and I'm especially excited because you're different than a lot of people we talk to. We talk to a lot of strategists. There are so many people who are interested in doing um, the kinds of things you do, but also the fact that you say there's such a wide variety of things for people yeah. to do in this field, I think will open up some people who are maybe think, oh, that's not for me, to think maybe sure. this is for me. And that's exactly what this is mm -hmm. supposed to do. So I'm really, I am really excited that yeah. you shared all that with me. Oh, and, and I get to, even at Accepted Students Day, my first this year, to get to talk to parents and reassure them, like, no, this is, your daughter made a good decision. Yeah, I, 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 I'll take care of it, don't worry. You know, like, <laughs> ah, that's so cool. Cool. So. Thanks for doing this, Gail. Oh, I really appreciate it. Yeah.